Hello everyone. This is a video I figured I would make after a comment on a short I had, and it's addressing the super loose train I run. I don't actually run this all like this, I just store it like this. And the reason I store it like this is so that in the cold, in the cold it's really bad, if I tighten this train to the point where I normally run it for slashing, which is relatively tight, and then I let the saw cool down, especially in the winter around here, the chain will get so tight that I run the risk of breaking the actual um, crankshaft on the clutch side. It sounds like something that shouldn't happen, but I've seen it happen to smaller saws than this, and it's not fun. And what this does is it allows this chain and everything to contract without tightening up against the bar and putting excess strain onto the actual clutch pack and everything on the internals of the saw. It also is a lot harder on the saw to have a tight chain all the time. It's harder on the bearings and it's hard on the actual um, sprocket. The sprocket, especially on some of the cheaper saws where it's built onto the clutch, it will wear the sprocket out prematurely. It also runs the risk of creating grooves, which when you spin the chain, you'll feel them. You'll feel the chain get tight in some spots and looser in others. It's a sign of either a bent um, crankshaft or a bad sprocket. It's also extremely hard to the tips of the bars because all that strain is going to be focused in on the bearings in there. And just overall, it's not good for a saw to have an overly tight chain in storage. These saws, these bars will get relatively warm even in the dead of winter and the chain expands and tight, keep tightening it up and then when the chain and everything cools down I believe steel's expansion and contraction rate is about one thousandth of an inch per inch per hundred degrees and where these chains can have a 150 almost 200 degree temperature swing at times that means on a 32 inch bar you're getting 64 thousandths of an inch of contraction to put that in perspective 64 thousandths of an inch is almost a um, 16th of an inch I believe yeah it's about a 16th of an inch which that will put a lot of a lot of pressure on the bearings on the bearings and the bar tip and on the clutch on the sprocket on the crankshaft and over time I have seen it fatigue crankshafts to the point where they will break the other thing I want to talk about is questions about it how tight do I run a train normally when I'm falling and the thing is is the train I run when I'm falling when I'm bucking and when I'm slashing are two, three completely different setups when I'm just regularly falling I'll take the saw, I'll bring it up like that, so this hangs down, and I'll bring it till the chain contacts the bottom of the bar, and when you pull it, it snaps back up tight to the bar. For bucking, I'll give it about an eighth of a turn more on the adjuster to get just a little bit tighter than when I'm slashing. I'll bring it up to when it's tight, and on a 32-inch bar, I'll give it about half a turn more, so that's really tight up against the bar, so I can help prevent throwing the chain. I don't go much tighter than that, uh, no matter what saw, no matter what length bar, just because, as I said, it's very hard on the bearings and it's hard on the clutch and the sprocket. And on some saws, cheaper saws where that's all one unit, it will cause a lot of premature wear on those items. At some point, I'll have to find some of the old clutches I have where people ran that. And you can see spots where the actual drive ones dug into the clutch clutch and the sprocket portion of the clutch i should say just because they were overly tight but hope that answers some of you guys' questions and hope it didn't create more questions than the answers but i appreciate all the support and thank you for watching stay safe